Hi there. In this video, I'm going to be talking about measuring length and angles. We're going to be measuring length of line segments and measuring angles in degrees. The first word I want to talk about is the word congruent. Now, the word congruent indicates that two things have the same measure. In this case, we're going to be talking about uh, two things that have the same length and the same angle measure. All right, so we're going to use the symbol for congruent, uh, which is an equal sign with a tilde on top. Okay, so let's look at an example of two things that are congruent. And so let's say that I have two line segments. I have line segment AB and line segment CD. Now, line segment AB has a length of four inches, and so does the length of CD. So the conclusion that we could draw is that the length of AB would be congruent to the length of CD, okay? And that's the statement that we would say. Now, the other thing that we can do is we can use what's called tick marks to show that these two segments are congruent. So I don't need to know the actual number. I just need to know tick marks to show that, okay? The next thing that we can talk about are congruent angles. Let's say that I have two different angles, angles BAM and angles PLN. Now these two angles, we'll call both of them 40 degrees. So this angle measure here is 40 degrees, and we'll call this angle here also 40 degrees. Because both of these angles have the same measure of 40 degrees, we can then say that angle BAM is congruent to angle PLN, okay? The other thing that we can do is we can use arc marks. Now, typically what you'll see in angles is you have this arc that connects one ray to the other, but what we want to show is that an, two angles, if, they, if all they have is an arc mark, then those two angles are in fact congruent. So this brings us to another word uh, called bisect, okay? And bisect is something that cuts an object into two congruent parts. So let's look at something that bisects a segment. So let's say, for example, that I have segment ET and that that segment length is 10 inches. Now let's say that I put a midpoint inside of that segment ET and we'll call that point R. Okay, and what that's going to do is it's going to cut an object into two congruent parts. And so what I can do is come in here and put in tick marks to show that ER is congruent to RT. And that's what a bisector does. Now, the other thing that I can come in here is I could say that this is now five inches and this is five inches. Okay, but I can say that if R is a midpoint, and remember from our last video that a midpoint cuts something in half, Okay, it's our middle point that we're going to get two congruent parts out of that. Now we could also have an angle bisector, and that's typically a ray that cuts our angle in half. Now let's say that this angle here is going to be this whole thing, let's call it 46 degrees, okay? And let's say that we have some point which we'll call M, all right, such that YM is a ray that cuts this into two congruent parts. And so notice that we've created this, uh, this ray here that's an angle bisector. So it's going to cut this angle into two congruent parts and that I have this angle is congruent to this angle. All right. And the important thing is, is that if I know the whole angle is 20, 46 degrees, then each of these individual angles are going to be 23 degrees. All right. And then I can write our uh, congruency statement here by saying that angle XYM is congruent to angle MYZ, okay? And that's how I'm going to name that and draw that conclusion that if this is an angle bisector, I've got two congruent angles. The last thing I want to talk about are these things called addition postulates. And so the first one I want to talk about is the segment addition postulate. And what that states is that if I have a segment here that is comprised of three different points, we'll call this A, B, and C, that what I can do is I could say that if AB is equal to three and BC is equal to a length of four, and we'll call these inches, then the total length from A to C would be seven inches. And we get that by adding the two smaller pieces together to get the whole piece. So what I would say here is that segment length AB plus segment length BC 
is equal to the whole thing, segment AC. Now we can extend this idea of the segment addition postulate to a problem like this. So let's say that we have a segment RS and ST combined together to give us the whole thing RT. Now if I use my segment addition postulate and say length RS plus the length of ST, add those together, it'll give us the whole thing RT. Now what I've got here is I can substitute my value for RS, which is 3, plus the value for ST, which is X plus 7, and set that equal to the whole length RT, which is 12. And what we can do is we can solve this equation for X. Now if I were to solve this equation and combine my like terms here, so 3 plus 7 is going to give me 10, so I have X plus 10 is equal to 12. And if I subtract 10 from both sides, then I'm going to get uh, that X is equal to 2. So we can set up and solve these algebraic problems based on the fact that I know that the two small segments added together gives us the whole segment. So on the last thing I want to talk about is I can apply that same concept to angles and use the angle addition postulate. So in this one, I've got two angles here that give me the big angle, okay? And let's say that my small angle down here is 10 degrees, okay? And let's say that my larger of the two angles is 25 degrees, all right? So the question is, is what is the measure of the entire angle, the big angle? And w thinking logically, if I add t 10 and 25 degrees to that, I get a total angle measure of 35 degrees. And all I'm doing is I'm going to take 10 plus 25, that gives me 35, all right? And if I put that in, in terms of angles, I could say that angle TQL plus angle LQP is going to equal the total angle, which is angle TQP, all right? And that's how I come up with the angle addition postulate. Let's look at a quick example of this. So in this last example, what I have is I have uh, three angles here. I've got this small angle, angle UMS. I have this other next uh, size up angle, RMU. And I have the big angle, angle RMS. Okay? And what I'm trying to do is figure out the measure of angle UMS. So in order to figure out this angle measure, I first have to figure out what X is. Knowing my angle addition postulate, what I could say is that if I take angle UMS, the small one, add it to the bigger one, angle RMU, that's going to give me my total angle length of angle RMS. Okay? Now what I want to do is substitute these values into my equation. So UMS, I'm going to substitute X plus 17. So X plus 17 plus the measure of angle RMU, which is 82 degrees is equal to the total angle measure, which is 126. Now, what I want to do is solve this equation for x. And so if I combine my like terms here, 17 plus 82, I'm going to get x plus 99. And that's going to equal 126. Now, the next thing that I would want to do is subtract 99 from both sides. So let's do that, and so we get that x is equal to a value of 27, okay? Now, once I've solved this equation for x, what I want to do now is plug this value back into uh, my expression for angle UMS. So angle UMS is equal to x plus 17. Now, if I plug in 27 for x, this is going to give me 27 plus 17, and that's going to give me a value of, of 44 degrees, okay? And so angle UMS is equal to 44 degrees, all right? That's all I've got for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you soon. Bye!